Feng Shui, Wikipedia Audio Feng Shui is a Chinese metaphysical and quasi-philosophical system that seeks to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment. It is closely linked to Taoism. The term Feng Shui literally translates as wind water in English. This is a cultural shorthand taken from the passage of the now lost classic of burial recorded in Guo Pu's commentary. Feng Shui is one of the five arts of Chinese metaphysics, classified as physiognomy. The Feng Shui practice discusses architecture in metaphoric terms of invisible forces that bind the universe, earth, and humanity together, known as Qi. Historically, Feng Shui was widely used to orient buildings often spiritually significant structures such as tombs, but also dwellings and other structures in an auspicious manner. Depending on the particular style of Feng Shui being used, an auspicious site could be determined by reference to local features such as bodies of water, stars, or a compass. History Qi rides the wind and scatters, but is retained when encountering water. The Skeptic Encyclopedia of Pseudoscience briefly summarizes the history and practice of Feng Shui. It states that the principles of Feng Shui related to living harmoniously with nature are quite rational, but does not otherwise lend credibility to the non-scientific claims. After a comprehensive 2016 evaluation of the subject by scientific skeptic author Brian Dunning, he concluded that there is nothing demonstrably real at all about the practice and stated that Dragon Gate 8 Formation, Xian Kong, Xian Kong Fei Xing, Xian Kong De Guo, Xian Kong Mi Zi, Xian Kong Lu Fa, Zi Bai Ju. There's no real science behind Feng Shui. It's also a simple matter to dismiss the mystical energies said to be at its core, they simply don't exist. As of 2013 the Yang Shao and Hong Shan cultures provide the earliest known evidence for the use of Feng Shui. Until the invention of the magnetic compass, Feng Shui apparently relied on astronomy to find correlations between humans and the universe. In 4000 BC, the doors of Banpo dwellings aligned with the asterism Yingxi just after the winter solstice this cited the homes for solar gain. During the Zhou era, Yingxi was known as Ding and used to indicate the appropriate time to build a capital city, according to the Shai Jing. The late Yang Shao site at Dadawan includes a palace-like building at the center. The building faces south and borders a large plaza. It stands on a north-south axis with another building that apparently housed communal activities. Regional communities may have used the complex. A grave at Puyang that contains mosaics actually a Chinese star map of the dragon and tiger asterisms and Baidu is oriented along a north-south axis. The presence of both round and square shapes in the Puyang tomb, at Hongshan ceremonial centers and at the late Longshan settlement at Lutegong, suggests that Gishan cosmography existed in Chinese society long before it appeared in the Zhubi Swanjing. Cosmography that bears a striking resemblance to modern Feng Shui devices and formulas appears on a piece of jade unearthed at Hanshan and dated around 3000 BC. Archaeologist Li Suekin links the design to the Liren astrolabe, Zhinanzhen, and Lupan. Beginning with palatial structures at Erlitu, all capital cities of China followed rules of Feng Shui for their design and layout. During the Zhou era, the Kaogongji codified these rules. The carpenter's manual Lu Banjing codified rules for builders. Graves and tombs also followed rules of Feng Shui, from Puyang to Ma Wangdui and beyond. From the earliest records, the structures of the graves and dwellings seem to have followed the same rules. 
Accessing Dragon Methods, Biazai, Yang Gong Feng Shui, Water Methods, Local Embrace. The history of Feng Shui covers 3,500 plus years before the invention of the magnetic compass. It originated in Chinese astronomy. Some current techniques can be traced to Neolithic China, while others were added later. The astronomical history of Feng Shui is evident in the development of instruments and techniques. According to the Zhuli, the original Feng Shui instrument may have been a gnomon. Chinese used circumpolar stars to determine the north-south axis of settlements. This technique explains why Shang palaces at Xiaotun lie 10 degrees east of due north. In some of the cases, as Paul Wheatley observed, they bisected the angle between the directions of the rising and setting sun to find north. This technique provided the more precise alignments of the Shang walls at Yunqi and Zhengzhou. Rituals for using a Feng Shui instrument required a diviner to examine current sky phenomena to set the device and adjust their position in relation to the device. Yin House Feng Shui, Four Pillars of Destiny, Zi Wei Doshu, I Qing, Qi Men Dun Jiri, De Lu Ren Tai Yi Shen Shu, Date Selection, Chinese Palmistry, Chinese Face Reading, Major and Minor Wandering Stars, Five Phases, BTB Black Tantric Buddhist Sect, Symbolic Feng Shui, Objects if Natural Environment or Object Slash S is Slash are not available or viable, Pierce method of Feng Shui The practice of melding striking with soothing furniture arrangements to promote peace and prosperity. Origins The oldest examples of instruments used for Feng Shui are Lyren astrolabes, also known as Shi. These consist of a lacquered, two-sided board with astronomical sighty lines. The earliest examples of Lyren astrolabes have been unearthed from tombs that date between 278 BC and 209 BC. Along with divination for De Lu Ren the boards were commonly used to chart the motion of Tai through the Nine Palaces. The markings on a Lyren slash Shi and the first magnetic compasses are virtually identical. The magnetic compass was invented for Feng Shui and has been in use since its invention. Traditional Feng Shui instrumentation consists of the lupan or the earlier south-pointing spoon though a conventional compass could suffice if one understood the differences. A Feng Shui ruler may also be employed. The goal of Feng Shui as practiced today is to situate the human-built environment on spots with good qi. The perfect spot is a location and an axis in time. Qi, is a movable positive or negative life force which plays an essential role in Feng Shui. In Feng Shui as in Chinese martial arts, it refers to energy, in the sense of life force or ela vital. A traditional explanation of qi as it relates to feng shui would include the orientation of a structure, its age, and its interaction with the surrounding environment, including the local microclimates, the slope of the land, vegetation, and soil quality. The Book of Burial says that burial takes advantage of vital qi. Wu Yunyan said that vital qi was congealed qi which is the state of qi that engenders life. The goal of Feng Shui is to take advantage of vital qi by appropriate siting of graves and structures. Some people destroyed graveyards of their enemies to weaken their qi. One use for a lupan is to detect the flow of qi. Magnetic compasses reflect local geomagnetism which includes geomagnetically induced currents caused by space weather. Professor Max Knoll suggested in a 1951 lecture that qi is a form of solar radiation. As space weather changes over time, and the quality of qi rises and falls over time, 
Feng Shui with a compass might be considered a form of divination that assesses the quality of the local environment including the effects of space weather. Often people with good karma live in land with good qi. Polarity is expressed in Feng Shui as yin and yang theory. Polarity expressed through yin and yang is similar to a magnetic dipole. That is, it is of two parts, one creating an exertion and one receiving the exertion. Yang acting and yin receiving could be considered an early understanding of chirality. The development of this theory and its corollary, five-phase theory, have also been linked with astronomical observations of sunspots. Early Instruments and Techniques Foundation Theories The five elements or forces which, according to the Chinese, are metal, earth, fire, water, and wood are first mentioned in Chinese literature in a chapter of the classic book of history. They play a very important part in Chinese thought. Elements meaning generally not so much the actual substances as the forces essential to human life. Earth is a buffer, or an equilibrium achieved when the polarities cancel each other. While the goal of Chinese medicine is to balance yin and yang in the body, the goal of feng shui has been described as aligning a city, site, building, or object with yin yang force fields. The BA Gua octagon with a trigram on each side is the cycle of the stations. In the southern hemisphere the seasons are reversed in relation to the northern hemisphere. So the BA Gua should reflect these differences, the Luopan Chinese compass with all formulas of Feng Shui summarized in a grid disc was created to be used in regions that lack natural elements and landforms. Method of Flying Stars the Coriolis effect causes the air currents and water rotate in opposite directions in the two hemispheres, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This effect causes a mirror in the distribution of energy on the surface of the globe. A new perspective, Feng Shui course, defends the adaptation of the Ba Gua later heaven sequence for the southern hemisphere based on trigrams and the northern hemisphere stars guide and the hemisphere south, Polaris and Alpha Crux. Feng Shui course created the solar method of the four seasons, unprecedented and valid method in both hemispheres. This perspective understands the profound Chinese philosophical and updated in time and space this important tool to create harmony and prosperity. Qi Polarity Bagua Traditional Feng Shui Form School Two diagrams known as Bagua loom large in Feng Shui, and both predate their mentions in the Yu Jing. The low chart was developed first, and is sometimes associated with later heaven arrangement of the Bagua. This and the Yellow River chart are linked to astronomical events of the 6th millennium BC, and with the Turtle Calendar from the time of Yao. The Turtle Calendar of Yao dates to 2300 BC, plus or minus 250 years. In Yeodian, the cardinal directions are determined by the marker stars of the mega constellations known as the four celestial animals. The diagrams are also linked with the Sifang method of divination used during the Shang dynasty. The Sifang is much older, however. It was used at Liang, and figured large in Hongshan culture's astronomy. And it is this area of China that is linked to Yellow Emperor who allegedly invented the South Pointing Spoon. Compass School Traditional Feng Shui is an ancient system based upon the observation of heavenly time and earthly space. The literature of ancient China, as well as archaeological evidence, provides some idea of the origins and nature of the original Feng Shui techniques. The form school is the oldest school of Feng Shui. 
Qing Wuzi in the Han Dynasty describes it in the Book of the Tomb and Guo Piyu of the Jin Dynasty follows up with a more complete description in the Book of Burial. The form school was originally concerned with the location and orientation of tombs, which was of great importance. The school then progressed to the consideration of homes and other buildings. The form in form school refers to the shape of the environment, such as mountains, rivers, plateaus, buildings, and general surroundings. It considers the five celestial animals, the yin-yang concept and the traditional five elements. The form school analyzes the shape of the land and flow of the wind and water to find a place with ideal qi. It also considers the time of important events such as the birth of the resident and the building of the structure. The Compass School is a collection of more recent Feng Shui techniques based on the eight cardinal directions, each of which is said to have unique qi. It uses the Lupan, a disc marked with formulas in concentric rings around a magnetic compass. The Compass School includes techniques such as Flying Star and Eight Mansions. Transmission of Traditional Feng Shui Techniques Aside from the books written throughout history by Feng Shui masters and students, there is also a strong oral history. In many cases, masters have passed on their techniques only to selected students or relatives. There is no contemporary agreement that one of the traditional schools is most correct. Therefore, Modern practitioners of Feng Shui generally draw from multiple schools in their own practices. Current Usage of Traditional Schools More recent forms of Feng Shui simplify principles that come from the traditional schools, and focus mainly on the use of the Bagua. The Eight Life Aspirations style of Feng Shui is a simple system which coordinates each of the eight cardinal directions with a specific life aspiration or station such as family, wealth, fame, etc., which come from the Bagua government of the eight aspirations. Life aspirations is not otherwise a geomantic system. Western Forms of Feng Shui Aspirations Method List of specific Feng Shui schools San Yuan Method San He Method Others Traditional Feng Shui relies upon the compass to give accurate readings. However, critics point out that the compass degrees are often inaccurate as fluctuations caused by solar winds have the ability to greatly disturb the electromagnetic field of the Earth. Determining a property or site location based upon magnetic north will result in inaccuracies because true magnetic north fluctuates. Matteo Ricci, one of the founding fathers of Jesuit China missions, may have been the first European to write about Feng Shui practices. His account in De Christiana Expedition Apudcinas tells about Feng Shui masters studying prospective construction sites or grave sites with reference to the head and the tail and the feet of the particular dragons which are supposed to dwell beneath that spot. As a Catholic missionary, Ricci strongly criticized the recondite science of geomancy along with astrology as yet another superstitio absurdissima of the heathens. What could be more absurd than their imagining that the safety of a family, honors, and their entire existence must depend upon such trifles as a door being opened from one side or another, as rain falling into a courtyard from the right or from the left, a window opened here or there, or one roof being higher than another. Victorian-era commentators on Feng Shui were generally ethnocentric and as such skeptical and derogatory of what they knew of Feng Shui. In 1896, at a meeting of the Educational Association of China, Rev. P. W. Pitcher railed at the rottenness of the whole scheme of Chinese architecture, 
and urged fellow missionaries to erect unabashedly western edifices of several stories and with towering spires in order to destroy nonsense about feng shui. After the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949, feng shui was officially considered a feudalistic superstitious practice and a social evil according to the state's ideology and was discouraged and even banned outright at times. Feng Shui remained popular in Hong Kong, and also in the Republic of China, where traditional culture was not suppressed. Persecution was the most severe during the Cultural Revolution, when Feng Shui was classified as a custom under the so-called Four Olds to be wiped out. Feng Shui practitioners were beaten and abused by Red Guards and their works burned. After the death of Mao Zedong and the end of the Cultural Revolution, the official attitude became more tolerant but restrictions on feng shui practice are still in place in today's China. It is illegal in the PRC today to register feng shui consultation as a business and similarly advertising feng shui practice is banned. There have been frequent crackdowns on feng shui practitioners on the grounds of promoting feudalistic superstitions such as one in Qingdao in early 2006 when the city's business and industrial administration office shut down an art gallery converted into a feng shui practice. Some communist officials who had previously consulted feng shui were terminated and expelled from the communist party. Partly because of the Cultural Revolution, in today's mainland China less than one-third of the population believe in feng shui, and the proportion of believers among young urban Chinese is said to be much lower learning feng shui is still somewhat considered taboo in today's China. Nevertheless, it is reported that feng shui has gained adherence among Communist Party officials according to a BBC Chinese news commentary in 2006, and since the beginning of Chinese economic reforms the number of feng shui practitioners is increasing. A number of Chinese academics permitted to research on the subject of feng shui are anthropologists or architects by profession, studying the history of feng shui or historical feng shui theories behind the design of heritage buildings, such as Cao De Feng, the vice president of Fudan University, and Lu Shenghuan of Tongji University. Westerners were criticized at the start of the anti-Western Boxer Rebellion for violating the basic principles of feng shui in the construction of railroads and other conspicuous public structures throughout China. However, today, feng shui is practiced not only by the Chinese, but also by Westerners and still criticized by Christians around the world. Many modern Christians have an opinion of feng shui similar to that of their predecessors. It is entirely inconsistent with Christianity to believe that harmony and balance result from the manipulation and channeling of non-physical forces or energies, or that such can be done by means of the proper placement of physical objects. Such techniques, in fact, belong to the world of sorcery. Still others are simply skeptical of feng shui. Evidence for its effectiveness is based primarily upon anecdote and users are often offered conflicting advice from different practitioners. Feng shui practitioners use these differences as evidence of variations in practice or different schools of thought. Critical analysts have described it thus, feng shui has always been based upon mere guesswork. Some are skeptical of Feng Shui's lasting impact Mark Johnson. This present state of affairs is ludicrous and confusing. Do we really believe that mirrors and flutes are going to change people's tendencies in any lasting and meaningful way? There is a lot of investigation that needs to be done or we will all go down the tubes because of our inability to match our exaggerated claims with lasting changes. Nonetheless, after Richard Nixon journeyed to the People's Republic of China in 1972, 
Feng Shui became marketable in the United States and has since been reinvented by New Age entrepreneurs for Western consumption. Critics of contemporary Feng Shui are concerned that with the passage of time much of the theory behind it has been lost in translation, not paid proper consideration, frowned upon, or even scorned. Robert T. Carroll sums up what Feng Shui has become in some instances. Feng Shui has become an aspect of interior decorating in the Western world and alleged masters of Feng Shui now hire themselves out for hefty sums to tell people such as Donald Trump which way his doors and other things should hang. Feng Shui has also become another New Age energy scam with arrays of metaphysical products, offered for sale to help you improve your health, maximize your potential, and guarantee fulfillment of some fortune cookie philosophy. Others have noted how, when Feng Shui is not applied properly, it can even harm the environment, such as was the case of people planting lucky bamboo in ecosystems that could not handle them. Feng Shui practitioners in China find superstitious and corrupt officials easy prey, despite official disapproval. In one instance, in 2009, county officials in Gansu, on the advice of Feng Shui practitioners, spent $732,000 to haul a 369-ton spirit rock to the county seat to ward off bad luck. The stage magician duo Penn and Teller dedicated an episode of their bullshit television show to criticize the construal of contemporary practice of Feng Shui in the Western world as science. In this episode, they devised a test in which the same dwelling was visited by five different Feng Shui consultants, all five producing different opinions about said dwelling, by which means it was attempted to show there is no consistency in the professional practice of Feng Shui. Apart from any mystical implications, Feng Shui may be simply understood as a traditional test of architectural goodness using a collection of metaphors. The test may be static or a simulation. Simulations may involve moving an imaginary person or organic creature, such as a dragon of a certain size and flexibility through a floor plan to uncover awkward turns and cramped spaces before actual construction. This is entirely analogous to imagining how a wheelchair might pass through a building, and is a plausible exercise for architects, who are expected to have exceptional spatial visualization talents. A static test might try to measure comfort in architecture through a hills and valleys metaphor. The big hill at your back is a metaphor for security, the open valley and stream represents air and light, and the circle of low hills in front represents both invitation to visitors and your control of your immediate environment. The various feng shui tenets represent a set of metaphors that suggest architectural qualities that the average human finds comfortable. Many Asians, especially people of Chinese descent, believe it is important to live a prosperous and healthy life as evident by the popularity of Fu L. Yu Shao in the Chinese communities. Many of the higher level forms of Feng Shui are not easily practiced without having connections in the community or a certain amount of wealth because hiring an expert, altering architecture, or design, and moving from place to place requires a significant financial output. This leads some people of the lower classes to lose faith in Feng Shui, saying that it is only a game for the wealthy. Others, however, practice less expensive forms of Feng Shui, including hanging special mirrors, forks, or walks in doorways to deflect negative energy. In recent years, a new brand of easier-to-implement DIY Feng Shui known as Symbolic Feng Shui, which is popularized by Grandmaster Lillian Tu, is being practiced by Feng Shui enthusiasts. It entails placements of auspicious five-element objects, such as money god and tortoise, 
at various locations of the house so as to achieve a pleasing and substitute alternative productive cycle environment if a good natural environment is not already present or is too expensive to build and implement. Feng Shui is so important to some strong believers, that they use it for healing purposes in addition to guide their businesses and create a peaceful atmosphere in their homes in particular in the bedroom where a number of techniques involving colors and arrangement are used to achieve enhanced comfort and more peaceful sleep. In 2005, even Disney acknowledged Feng Shui as an important part of Chinese culture by shifting the main gate to Hong Kong Disneyland by 12 degrees in their building plans among many other actions suggested by the Master Planner of Architecture and Design at Walt Disney Imagineering, Wing Chao, in an effort to incorporate local culture into the theme park. At Singapore Polytechnic and other institutions, many working professionals from various disciplines take courses on Feng Shui and divination every year with a number of them becoming part-time or full-time Feng Shui consultants eventually. There is a divergence between some Feng Shui schools on the need or not to adapt the ancient Chinese theories when Feng Shui is used in the Southern Hemisphere. The differences between the two hemispheres are a fact of reality, but its influence on the Feng Shui not is unanimity among scholars and practitioners of Chinese technique. The Feng Shui schools to the Southern Hemisphere defend the need for changes that span the Feng Shui and Chinese astrology four pillars. Among the main arguments for changes to be made can be cited. The validity of these statements can involve discussions and studies. The following article outlines some reasons and methods used by adopting the adjustments to the Southern Hemisphere. The application of Feng Shui depends on where we are on Earth, the place of geography, near a river, where supposedly energy flows, is moving or near a mountain where energy accumulates. In the case of people, where they are born, where they live. Speaking in geographical coordinates, east and west remains, plus the equator acts as a mirror dividing Earth into two hemispheres, north and south. In the northern hemisphere cold it is in the north the Arctic, and the heat in the south the equator. Unlike the southern hemisphere where the heat is in the north, the cold is in the south, in Antarctica. The seasons also are reversed. When it is summer in the southern hemisphere, it is winter in the northern hemisphere. When it is autumn in the southern hemisphere, it is spring in the northern hemisphere and vice versa. The I Ching mentions that we must turn to the light side, to meditate, i.e. soul in the northern hemisphere, which corresponds to turn north in the southern hemisphere. This is based on the position of the sun, which in the southern hemisphere rises in the east, it goes to the north and sets in the west. In the translation of the I Ching for the Portuguese it is also emphasized that one should observe the season referred to in the text and not the month in question, since the work was written in China, which fully meets in the Northern Hemisphere, and the months corresponding to the seasons are always different in the two hemispheres of the Earth. For example, the sign that represents the height of summer is the horse. Corresponds to heat fire element, December, toward magnetic north, in the southern hemisphere, while the horse in the northern hemisphere corresponds to the month of June and the south. The five elements are related to the seasons, with directions, with the twelve signs, with the months, days and hours, yielding a calendar. When working on the floor plan of a building, the technique is used the Bahse, and in the case of people the technique of Mingua. The eight trigrams of the I Ching will be related to magnetic coordinates, respectively, in the southern hemisphere, it goes for most of Brazil, including Sao Paulo, North 9, 
Northeastern 4, East 3, Southeast 8, South 1, Southwest 6, West 7, Northwest SC2 is a matrix 3x3, which is the plan, 360 degrees and or, 5 is in the center, which is the number considered sacred. Magic Square the relationship between the twelve signs and the five elements originate to sixty binomials. In summer 2006 is the year of the metal dragon in the southern hemisphere. The year of change occurs in the first spring month because the lunar year start on tiger month first spring, in summer 2008 is the year of the water horse. In 2009 is the year of the water sheep. This date is calculated as the Northern Hemisphere. T.I. Li Popular Zingxi Pi Forms Methods Liakai Pi Popular Liakai Pi Compass Methods Contemporary Uses of Traditional Feng Shui Criticisms Traditional Feng Shui 2 Contemporary Feng Shui Feng Shui Practice Today Feng Shui in the Southern Hemisphere Feng Shui in Brazil